So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So finally, what I have here is the all new 2023 BMW 318 iSport LCI. This is the all new facelifted 3 series. This is still in its 7th generation. So LCI meaning life cycle impulse. So it's BMW saying of a facelift. But there is more to that than just having a facelift. So let's get the similarities out of the way first. So carried over from the pre-facelift model, you still have the same engine and internal. So this one is still powered by a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that produces 156 horsepower and 250 newton meters of torque. And like all BMWs, well, for the 3 Series, this one is mated to an 8-speed ZF automatic transmission. So that's the only similarities that have been carried over from the pre-facelift model. So what do you get now with this life cycle impulse? You get new front bumpers and a slightly revised grille over here. So the looks alone... I freaking love it. I gotta say, this is probably the best looking facelifted BMW I've seen so far. So comparing with the pre-facelift model, as you can see, a lot has been tweaked. So you get a bigger mouth now. I didn't like this before, but it grew on me seeing it now in person. Same case with the BMW M42. Ground clearance still remains the same, 142 millimeters, which isn't too bad. So you still have the BMW active kidney grill here. So at this point now it's still shut because the engine is off so just looking at the specs right now i'm not sure if these are still the matrix style led lights but it's still the adaptive headlights that still go up and down and surprisingly bm a bmw i don't see any faker here whatsoever i mean i know this is just the regular 3c's but it's still good so the vents here actually function you can see through it and you have front parking sensors as well here the front clip over here and this one is all gloss black but i don't mind it because it's on the exterior anyway so as well new creases here on the hood too and you get a new set of headlights too they're like more of an l-shaped design now so on the side profile majority it looks more or less the same than the pre-facelift model but for an eagle eye viewer as you notice there are m badges on either side this is not officially an m sport variant of the 3 series this just has the m aerodynamic packages so as i explained earlier so another thing with this lci model you get new sets of wheels too and what i like too with this facelifted 3 series now is the side mirror you still have repeaters on them but there's no more like top stock so it looks like more of an m product now so here now at the rear of the all new bmw 318 i sport lci so where my hands are until here remains exactly the same from the pre-facelift model you get both bmw and 318 i badges here and the taillights remain exactly the same too I don't mind it because for me these are the sexiest BMW taillights, in my opinion only. So as well being a BMW, I thought these were fake vents but actually it houses your reflectors. So I'll give that a pass and as you can see you have a diffuser over here. They're also wrapped in gloss black but I don't mind it whatsoever because you have real exhaust on either side. And as well you have a reverse camera over here and carried over from the pre-facelift model you still have an electronic tailgate so the boot space remains exactly the same at 480 liters but i didn't know from the pre-facelift model you can add now a tow hitch for this bmw sedan never seen that in a while that's about it to the exterior the engine and the boot of this 318 iSport lci let's go to the interior So this is the interior of the all-new BMW 318i Sport LCI. A lot of letters there again. So if you noticed immediately, if you're a long-time viewer of my channel with BMWs, this does not have soft close because this one's a solid thud. So there's no click if you close the door completely. So this is the interior again of the all-new LCI. So this is the biggest update done here with this 318i Sport. Well, 3 series in general. Whatever model comes here now, we will all get this BMW iDrive 8 system. So like before, my complaint with the iDrive here and there is the air conditioning system. There's no problem with it, but the thing is when you have to turn it off, there's a lot of things you have to press before you can turn it off completely. You have a fresh air mode, I don't know what that does, so I assume that puts all the windows down? I assume only. And then here in the infotainment system, the maps pretty good very seamless slight delay but you don't have an issue and then yet again my favorite part with all bmws you check your service requirements here and there yeah 
still carried over from all of the previous BMWs. I really love that feature. Ah, okay. So there's only two driving modes here. In the, for the infotainment, so you have Sport and Eco Pro for the chassis. So as well, since we're talking about driving modes, so here in the center console, another big update with this 318i Sport is the the that that shift, just to toggle up and down. My favorite update with this 318i Sport are the paddle shifters. Love that, freaking love that. So here in the instrument cluster, yeah, it's your typical iDrive 8 BMW now. There's a lot of settings you can do here and there. And here in the steering wheel, exactly throughout like all BMW, soft and very nice to the touch and cruise control functions on the left. And then you have your instrument cluster and volume adjustments here on the right side. Okay, so solely on the right for instrument cluster. So for adjusting stuff here in the iDrive 8 infotainment is the swivel here right in the middle. So does this have gesture control? No, no, there's no gesture control sadly for this 318i Sport. But it's a small nitpick because the previous 318i didn't have that anyways. So here in the door card, solid, robust, love all the materials here and there. You have memory seating functions. And then you have cubby space and cup holders on either side. Boot release button as well only here for the left side. My big water jug fits here. And in the center, yes, I know I nitpicked a lot with the iDrive 8. But I love the simple layout here for the center stock. It's just here for your volume adjustments and some air conditioning functions. Please watch my empty competition walk around review. I had the hilarious moment with the iDrive 8. Since I got the hang of it there for the first time. So I know what I'm doing here already. <laughs> so below here. Open this up, you have wireless charging pad, two cup holders, my phone fits, and my big water jug fits too. And you have that famous water resistant USB port and it will volt socket. Going back here in the gear lever, you still have the same driving mode, Sport, Comfort, and Eco Pro. And actually I've never driven something with this, so can't wait to drive that on later. The iX is a different story because they're, all the modes were all here in the infotainment system already. Then glove box. Okay, it's big. Not bad. I was expecting a little bit deeper, but it just goes all the way in there, at least. And then, another nitpick of mine, just being honest, for all the dome lights here, they're the same smiley style lights, but they're all halogens. So I was expecting LEDs. Then visor, vanity mirror with light. Don't extend, but it's fine. Even this is halogen. Then here, the center console box. You have a USB-C port, a halogen light. Okay, pretty decent amount of space. And the seats here, this is not an M Sport team, if you can see it, but these are just the regular seats. Still not too bad, you still have the tie support, and just adjustments and electronic adjustments for both front seats at least. Yep, correct. So, that's it, let's go to the back seats. So, here now in the rear of the T18 i Sport LCI. So, sitting here in the back. Okay, exactly the same like before. Feet room, knee room is all excellent. My headroom, um, 5'4", by the way, this is my headroom. I have just enough. So, I assume 6 feet people might struggle just ever so slightly only. But then again, I'm very happy to sit here in the back of this 318 iSport. So, here in the door card, you have exactly the same door cards like the ones in front. I even forgot to mention that this has ambient lighting all around, even in the dashboard. So despite having smaller cubby spaces and cup holders, my big water jug surprisingly still fits. And here in the back, pretty simple again. You have two net storages on either side. And in the center, you have two air conditioning vents, your climate control functions, and your USB-C ports. So if we sit here in the middle, my same complaint from the pre-facelift model. The transmission tunnel is really tall, but it's not as tall as an Alfa Romeo Giulia. Then here in the center armrest, you have pop-out cup holders. Surprisingly, still fits my water jug despite having flimsy grips all around. And I even forgot to mention up front, like all new BMWs, the light controls are all located on the left side. You still have an extra storage too. As well, Isofix anchor points on each side. And like with the pre-facelift model, you can fold down the rear seats to maximize your boot space, which I find pretty cool too in this day and age because some sedans don't have that feature anymore. So that's about it here in the interior with this 308i Sport LCI. Let's go for a drive. So this 318i Sport actually has paddle lamps. Never knew about that. 
And if you saw in the shot earlier, yeah, you sit way down right here. So it's you feel like you're already cocooned in this T1 eye sport. As well, there's ambient lighting on either side. I'm wearing gloves. Why not? So, finally, I'm gonna drive this T18 iSport LCI. And first impressions, I can tell the auto hold isn't jerky. Even just tap the throttle, it will launch forward already. Speed sensing door locks too. Right, being a BMW, what's new with the driving dynamics? I mean, I'd love to try the paddle shifters if we get in the back later on. But first impressions here, just doing 20 kilometers per hour. It's your typical BMW X7 NVH. Handling, I'm just, I just set it to Eco Pro for now. And then ground clearance. This is a very big gum here around in centuries. No issues going over it. Oh yeah, despite two on-run flats, I don't hear much of tire noise too. It's not as loud compared with the pre-facelift model, the 1 series. The 5 series so-so, but the new ones, of course, they're much better insulated. And then here, the rough patch of road. Let's test out the tire noise. Oh, lovely. Typical BMW, not surprised there. Okay, let's put you to sport now. <laughs> And here again with humps. This is what I like too weirdly with these three series. I know I've driven W206 Mercedes C-Class. I've driven that too by the way. That had an issue grounding out at even just regular humps. This one already has the bars set high on it. I mean you can literally drive this as a daily. Ah, so you can engage sport mode here in the bottom or in the gear lever. But then again my nitpick is there is no manual mode. But if I pull the paddle, yeah, the manual mode engages already. So... Okay, pretty flat, like every other BMW. <laughs> okay, the paddles are a treat. And surprisingly, just, despite just being a regular ZF torque converter, it shifts up and down pretty quickly. And there's not much transmission that I have. And yet, like all BMWs, despite being manual mode, it will automatically upshift. Okay, let's try comfort mode since I'm barely on that mode. And yeah, this as well only being a regular 3 series, not an M Sport crazy variant yet. The suspension of this is of course firm like every other BMW, but it's still very soft. I love that indicator sound too. And yeah, the suspension of it is pretty soft. So over rough patches of road here and there, despite having the sportiest nature in its class, as well one of the best riding ones in terms of comfort too so i haven't done this in a while in a in a bmw review you turn test over here oh god i said bmw right turning circles not is really tight actually so maneuvering this around in the city or just here in eton it will it will be very easy oh i discovered something too so i just changed modes too and it's still stuck in manual mode. So you actually have to press down again to the D or the S to engage either manual or automatic mode. Ah, something I never knew about that. And just in comfort mode. <laughs> yeah, it's a BMW. It's one of the best driving cars in its segment. I love the handling too. Yes, it's pretty light. Of course, sport weights up just ever so slightly. And... But yes, it's as well one of the better driving ones in its class. No Alfa Romeo like, but I would hand this down pick over this over an Alfa because as well with its price, I did mention that too earlier. This one cost 3,790,000 pesos. So that's like 700 to 800,000 pesos more than the pre-facelift model. That's what as well made it mostly popular in the first place because of its price tag. I mean, this 3.8 almost 3.8 million pesos is still not too bad i have to say so what made me like this lci now compared with the pre-facelift model i'll be very honest <laughs> paddle shifters that's all i've been asking since day one 
However, driving dynamics wise, remains, I guess, the same, more or less the same with the pre facelift model. However, with the sport mode now, I noticed compared with the pre facelift, it seems a little bit more aggressive on gear shifts and throttle response. But that's what, that's what I love with this BMW too. So, would I get one personally? I would say no first because there is one T-Series variant that will hopefully come to the Philippines. The Touring variant, the wagon version. That's what I really want. However, if that won't, if ever won't come to the Philippines, I'll be happy with this T-Series. Fort mode again. I love this handling, it's really flat. Oh no! <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, it's fine. Sorry, sorry. Oh yeah, I noticed too now in the instrument cluster there's a G meter, and brakes are pretty sharp too. It's a BMW. Wow. Oh, what else to say with this BMW? We'll swap seats with Julian Dumpit over here. Yes, with me because I'm driving this BMW and I'm actually gonna help him choose if this is gonna be the right BMW. So as well, before we swap seats, so fuel economy over here. So in my high driving, high speed driving, it says here 16.8 liters per 100 kilometers. The highest figure I got, I calculated it already, 9.8 kilometers per liter. Not bad for what this is, surprisingly. So yeah. Join you in a bit. Let's swap seats. The facelifted G30 BMW 318i. BMW and Mercedes and even Audi are faced with a very, very big task of competing with the likes of the uh, regular economy cars like the Toyota Corolla or the, or the Honda Civic. Why? Because the Honda Civic and Toyota Corolla these days, if all you're looking for is refinement, and comfort the Corolla and Civic have that in spades especially when you're just trundling around the city or even the, the occasional jaunts around uh, outside the city uh, heading to the province or carving canyons whatever so you don't buy a BMW because you get a good deal on one you buy a BMW because you have discerning taste you're looking for something, that little extra something that you don't get in a run-of-the-mill Civic or Corolla. In terms of comfort, you're not going to find anything better. It's on par with a Civic or Corolla, which is to say you can pound on these things on rutted streets, no problem whatsoever. And I think John mentioned earlier, I mean, the ground clearance is perfect, especially with, you know, speed humps everywhere in the metro. One thing I must say though, coming from an E3318i from 2010, this is much more luxurious, it's much softer, the comfort factor is turned up a few notches. I think that started ever since they moved from the E90 class body to the uh, uh, F30. The F30, I remembered, was much softer, mu much similar to this, uh, electronic power steering, very soft, very forgiving ride. The E90 was much firmer, but this, however, has a bit of a hit with regard to driving dynamics. Especially when, uh, if you recall, John sort of drove this here on this sharp bend. It, it does lean just ever so slightly on the corners, which I don't remember doing in the E90. The E90 cornered much flatter. Although the E90 is too much of a pseudo sports car to be enjoyed every day, actually. So, it really is a, a perfect car for, for city commutes, for driving out of town. It's lovely. And even on run flat tires, washboard surfaces, manhole covers, yeah, they're absolutely fine. Uh, which is surprising. Uh, I, I usually hear a lot of bad stories about run flat tires uh, ruining the ride, but BMW sort of tuned it perfectly for this suspension. In fact, I could almost say with confidence 
it nears makes no difference to drive from a 5 series so they have a very consistent driving signature I miss the raunchy feel of the E90 with the heavy steering that really felt like a pseudo sports car but for most everyday driving this is the car to get it's it inspires confidence it's very soft even in these bad streets and it has more than enough space to accommodate you know the luggage and the family uh, just not just not anybody in the middle seat because the transmission tunnel is horrendous overall I think a fair shake would be to say actually there's really not much different with the W206 and this 318i and that's not a bad thing it means to say that cars now have come to a point where the the fundamental driving dynamics are the, the same they're all great to drive except this one just has higher ground clearance and it has the, the better technology overall it just looks better uh, it looks like a 7 series from in here the new one not the uh, not the uh, G the old one the G60 or something something or other the one with the uh, uh, slimmer grill so overall yeah I would choose this over a W206 C class just because of the added ground clearance and the better technology the only drawback for me personally would be the styling I am a big fan of the pre-facelift 318i uh, sadly they they did a bit more to make the car more aggressive to a to appeal to a wider demographic who really likes the sporty look because after all this is a BMW and usually BMWs after you get them from the dealer they fit big wheels they, they put on the more aggressive uh, valence and the uh, front splitter so I'm glad that BMW took the initiative to really please the fans and the customers with this uh, facelift uh, thanks very much for letting me intrude into this video and again let me segue in by saying uh, please do check out my channel as well uh, there, is, there isn't as much of a plethora of videos as I do with uh, Sir John's channel but uh, there's plenty more to come so please do subscribe as well uh, and uh, I'll see you around so that was Julian's case remember he has a channel so please subscribe to him as well and yeah, first time I literally sat here in the back of a 3 Series. What is is there to say? It's it's a 3 Series. It's pretty comfortable. Although you have to watch out for the driver or whoever's driving. You can tend to fly here in the back. But if you're just here around in the city, perfect. It But to sum up this car against its rivals, even for me and Alfa Romeo Julia, this is perfect and this is the probably the sedan I would take home gladly take home so that concludes this i think the first ever review in the country of this all new bmw t18i sport lci so yet again you may subscribe to julian dumpit and on my channel too and we'll give you more bmw content very soon on our channels so hope you guys like and subscribe and i will see you with more bmw content coming right up and as well you'll know very soon why i was wearing gloves in this review bye bye